In this video, I will share 12 investing mistakes and I've made every one of them. Some companies give you perks if you own their shares. A few years ago, I invested in the pub chain Marsdens to obtain their privilege card. With this card in my hand, I was entitled to 20% off my food bills. I thought how frugal and savvy I was. This was great. Bring on the bill, I said. The food tastes so much nicer with a fifth off the price. I must have saved at least £100 over the years, but unfortunately the shares did not do so well, however. And although I saved £100, the share value decreased by £500. Oh well. Every day is a learning day. In my early days of investing, I bought some rather speculative shares. And when they started to fall in value, I held on to them for far too long. I should have got rid of them sooner, but I hoped they would make a comeback. But they never did. Taking profits too soon and then seeing the share price rocket can be a real disappointment. This happened to me when I bought the house builder Persimmon. It was rising, so I bought at £6 and then sold at £8. But then I watched helplessly as they rocketed on to £33 a share. It is a really important point why as humans we tend to pounce on small profits but let our losses build up. Why does this happen? The answer to this and why 90% of day traders lose money is all to do with our brains. My background is not in finance. My PhD was in neurophysiology. So let me try and explain. Deep inside our brain lies one of the oldest regions in our human evolution, the amygdala. It protects us from danger and gives us the sense of fear. Unfortunately for short-term trading, it can make our lives a living hell. This is the reason I am a long-term investor and not a day trader or short-term investor. When trading, our amygdala does everything to protect us from experiencing pain. Selling your shares when you see a loss can be hard to do. Crystallizing that loss will cause you pain and your amygdala stops that from happening. Fear now turns to hope. You hope the share price will rise again, but often it falls further until panic sets in, hope is gone and we crystallize a large loss. So what happens if our shares go up? Again, our brain wants to protect us from the pain of losing or admitting to others or ourselves that we made a loss. So we grab small profits when we can. There is a famous saying, you can never go broke if you take profits, but this is exactly what happens in the end. Research shows that 90% of day traders are intelligent, educated and successful people in other aspects of their lives. But at trading, this tendency to take small profits but create big losses is eventually unsustainable. It's like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Mistake number nine, confusing price with value. After the financial crisis, shares in the FTSE were incredibly cheap and I started buying struggling companies which were full of debt, thinking they were bargains a few did not recover and many needed to tap their shareholders for extra funds. What I should have done was not buy the cheapest companies in a particular sector. I should have bought the strongest with the best balance sheets. Number eight, not knowing the difference between cyclicals and defensive stocks. Cyclicals like oil and mining do better in good times but proportionally worse in bad times. They can be more volatile. Defensives like utilities and consumer staples won't blow the lights out, but they are dependable and more stable. 
I now make sure I have a good balance of both. At first, I didn't and I was not diversified. If I had my time again, I would have stuck with a stocks and shares ISA instead of opening a non-ISA account. I was a few years late to the party here, which means I have to work a little harder to shield my dividends from tax each year. Catching a falling knife. Several years ago, the price of crude oil tumbled because shale oil and gas was flooding the market. I'd been monitoring it closely between $90 and $100 a barrel. When it started plummeting, I jumped in convinced it would go back up quickly, but I was betting against the trend. I was catching a falling knife. Sometimes the market behaves unpredictably and can remain irrational for longer than we can remain solvent. I didn't lose much, but it was a lesson learned not to go against a strong trend or expect to time the market. Number five, be careful about tips, rumors, and gossip, and make sure you do your full research before making decisions. In 2009, I heard a rumor that Taylor Wimpy was about to win a huge government contract. It had no validity whatsoever, but I wanted to believe it, so I bought the shares and ended up not making a single penny. In the first year, I made the mistake of following the crowd and not doing my own research. On my trading platform, everyone seemed to be buying shares in a FTSE 100 loan company that had plummeted in value after the financial crisis. The fear of missing out gripped me and I followed the others. Shortly after, the company went into administration and I learned another valuable lesson. Beware of the yield trap. It has tempted me many times. Sometimes you see a company paying a huge dividend yield. This is simply because the share price has already tumbled. People probably have concerns about future earnings and therefore a dividend cut and further price fall could be just around the corner. I tend to aim for a yield between four to six percent. Try to look for a figure called the dividend cover. A value of two or above means that the company is earning twice as much as the dividend cost, and this is a very good sign. If the value is below one, however, then the company cannot afford the dividend and might be borrowing in order to pay it. This happened to Tullow Oil, a share I held a few years ago. My second biggest mistake was investing in AIM shares. This is the alternative investment market and they are generally very small companies or startups. The slightest rumor can send the shares soaring or plummeting. Very few pay a dividend and I had to learn the hard way that they were simply not for me. New and exciting? No thanks. When it comes to shares, I'll take dull and boring every day of the week. And my biggest regret is not starting my investment journey sooner. Compounding needs as much time as it can get. Imagine if as soon as you were born, your parents invested 10 pounds a week in a FTSE fund for you. And throughout life, you continue to invest 10 pounds every week. At 65, you would be a millionaire. But if you started when you were five years old instead, you would end up with £300,000 less. The sooner you start, the better. I hope you found this useful. If you did, then consider subscribing and may the markets go your way.